Hi, my name is Julianne, and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 books in 2017. Now, you might be wondering why I'm making a video at the end of January instead of the beginning, and I'm just lazy. I kept telling myself I'm going to make this video, and I said that for about like two weeks straight, and then finally I'm like, I gotta get this video done. Like two years ago, I shouted out Ben J. Pierce's song, and then the next year I shouted out his second song, so this year I'll do his third song, which is called Never Apart. I don't know why, but I'm making this a tradition. Hopefully he puts out a new song this year, because his songs are amazing. Now I'm going to jump into the actual video. This is not really in any particular order, I just kind of wrote it down with the way I remembered what I read. The first book I would say is probably, I think, my favorite book of 2017. And no, it's not a Rick Riordan book. I was shocked too. It's called... Draw the Line by Laurent Lynn. Oh my god, I love this book. <laughs> when I bought this book, I literally read it that day. It's a 500 page book. I sat down and read this in one sitting. I was up to 5 a.m. It was amazing. <laughs> I started laughing about page two, and it's just so funny, it's so beautiful. I love it so much. I will read the description on the back because no matter what I say, how I try to explain what this book is about, and I swear, every time I say what it's about, I feel like it just doesn't come off sounding like a good book. So I'm just gonna read the description. Adrian Piper is used to blending into the background. He may be a talented artist, a sci-fi geek and gay, but at his Texas high school, those traits would only bring him the worst kind of attention. In fact, the only place he feels free to express himself is at his drawing table, crafting a secret world through his own Renaissance art-inspired superhero graphite. But in real life, when a shocking hate crime flips this world upside down, Adrian must decide what kind of person he wants to be. Maybe it's time not to be so invisible after all, no matter how dangerous the risk. This book falls into so many categories. I mean, there's a romance, it's adorable. And then you have like this mystery that's going on. It feels kind of like a detective story. It's just so much fun, so good. I highly recommend it. Also, as soon as I finished it, the next day I started it again. At some point I'm gonna reread this because I love it so much. Next up is the Dark Prophecy by Rick Briordan. This is the second book in Trials of Apollo, which is the spin-off series of Heroes Olympus, which that is in itself a spin-off series of the Prince Jackson series. There's so many spin-off series. And <laughs> I enjoy this more than the first book, because the first book, it was good. But there were definitely lines where I was like, what is even happening? Like, I don't know if anyone remembers that one line way in the beginning of the book where it's just like this rambly paragraph and then it ends with, I'm so confused and I'm just like, same Rick. This book felt more coherent and it had one of my favorite characters in it and I was so excited. I enjoyed this book, it was it was fine. Apollo is great, like he's so self-absorbed. I highly recommend checking out Rick Riordan if you haven't already. And the second book, surprise surprise, is another Rick Riordan book and it is the final book in the Magnus Chase series called Ship of the Dead. This book was excellent. I I just love Magnus Chase, the Magnus Chase series. It almost, like that second book, I was worried. I was like, do I like this more than Percy Jackson? Because like seriously, the second book almost made me say that the series was better than Percy Jackson series. But I was like, I gotta wait for that third book. And it's almost as good as Percy Jackson. It's so hard to beat the last Olympian. This is good, but like, as a finale, just, you cannot beat Last Olympian. That is just the perfect ending. Although this is really good. It's like a close second. Like, it is so good. I love this book. It was so much fun. Next on the list is Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. My mom is borrowing the book and I have no idea where it is, so here's a picture. Actually, this is my one year anniversary of starting Welcome to Night Vale, and it's just Ah, uh, it's so good. I love that. I love Welcome to Night Vale. Welcome to Night Vale really kick-started this whole like podcast train for me. And so obviously I read their book. It's amazing. I met them at BookCon. I made a complete fool of myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dearly Marion. But Welcome to Night Vale, the book is really great. I love it. Especially if you listen to the podcast, I re recommend this book. And the fifth book is obviously It Devours. And this book was amazing as well. It makes more sense if you have at least read the first book and listen to at least past the like second year portion of Welcome to Night Vale. Especially when it comes to the desert other world, it just makes sense. And it kind of sort of spoils some stuff that happens to a particular character. I had like a good time reading it. It was just really fun. It was really cool to get more of Carlos's point of view. It was interesting to see the other scientists and get other people's point of views. It's just so much fun to explore this world. Highly recommend. This book I discovered I just random, I think I mentioned in some video how I got this book, but basically I saw the title and was like, I need this book. And it's called 
Just One Damn Thing After Another by Jodie Taylor. It's about time travel. It's amazing. <laughs> like, oh my god, the time travel in this is just, it's so much fun. It's like, think of Ars Paradoxia, but like, with hu more humor. This book was so funny, and it was just so much fun to read. I don't know what else to say. It's just like, Jodie Taylor is one of the funniest authors I've read. Her book is just such a fun ride. A lot of stuff happens. It is a long series, and I still need to pick up the second book, but it is such a good book. Like, honestly, highly, highly recommend, which is why it's on the top 10 list. 10 books of 2017 for me, um, and I can't wait to continue with this series. Um, um, Bella? B Bella, I'm recording. Okay, um, sorry for my dog. Um, anyways. The next book on my list is, of course, a Chris Wedding book. Oh my god, that almost fell and it just hit me. Ow, that actually hurt. Um, but the Velocity by Chris Wedding. This book beautiful. This is like a dystopian world. The only way to really make money is through racing. So these two girls who are I think like 16 or something like that, they're like we're gonna join these races but like think like these races are kind of like the Hunger Games. Like I forgot the actual term but the game makers. They'll send um, people out to go kill you and basically have people on the tracks that are there to purposely murder you and not to win the race. So it's like so scary to do these races, but like you can make a lot of money. These two girls, they want to race and they want to win and they want to race in the big times. And so it's their journey of trying to get there and what happens on these races. Trust me, it's amazing. Also, Chris Wooding is the best, the king of world building, I swear. Oh my gosh, world building. <laughs> His world building is amazing. The actual action is awesome and like the racing. Races probably were my favorite part because they were so exciting to read. This book is great. I keep saying that about every book but all of these books are great. That's why they're on the top 10 list. The next book is called One of Us is Lying. This book, One of Us is Lying, it is basically The Breakfast Club meets Gossip Girl with murder. Does that not sell you? You have these kids, they're in detention, one of the classmates ends up dead and all suspicion is on them. And the question is, who did it? Who killed this classmate? This book, I, how, 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 made me trust and distrust everyone at the same time. How did you make me feel these feelings like this? And it's just like so difficult to, you know, trying to figure out who the killer is when you actually like everyone. Like it was a wild ride. When I found out who the murderer was, I was like, no, no. <laughs> oh my God. I highly recommend this book. Every single one of these characters had motive. And, you know, I was just like, it's everyone, it's the teacher. At one point, there was this one girl, right? I'm like, it's her mom. Like, literally, I was blaming everyone. <laughs> highly recommend this if you need, like, a murder mystery thriller. Next up on the list, Nemesis. This book was, I, I talked about it in a wrap up, but it's so good. I don't even really want to tell you too much because in my opinion it's better to go in more blind. I actually recommend not even reading the summary. All you need to know is there's this girl, every two years on her birthday some man shows up, murders her, and she wakes up completely fine. And it's been going on since I think she was eight. And so she's like trying to figure out who's murdering her? Why is he murdering her? And what the hell is going on? The direction of this book went in a place I did not see coming at all. And I cannot wait for the sequel. Highly, highly recommend this book. So the last book on the list is Enemy Exposure by Megan Rogers. This is the sequel to Crossing the Line. So Crossing the Line is basically, well, the first book. Let me explain what the first book is. Can you not drink water when I record? Thanks. Anyway, so you have this girl who was kidnapped by the North Korean government and was trained to be a spy. One day, North Korea, the North Koreans send her to America to spy on this group, which is not really an American spy group, it's more of like Kingsmen, like they don't really operate within the confines of the law, but they are situated in America. So the North Koreans send this girl to America to go to this um, spy group. She gets there and is like, all right, I'm gonna become a double agent and help you guys take down the North Korean government. And oh my god, it's amazing. Like, this is a wild ride, okay? This girl was literally trained by the North Koreans and she's going to become a double agent to bring them down. Like, is that not exciting? Highly recommend this book, like, oh my god. I don't even know if I should, how much I should say, like, it's just insane. It's such a wild ride. And so the second book, it just like follows events that happen after the first book. I'm not gonna go into detail because spoilers, but 
it's awesome highly recommend it go read this book so those were the books of that were my top 10 of 2017 there were a couple others where i was like i really want to put you on the list but i can't because rick Riordan and uh the nightmare people are just like taking up the whole list so i had to push some people out of the way but these were the top 10 thank you for watching i will see you next time put it down in the comments if you read these books and happy reading bye